Let's just throw the rags out the window, boys. We're racing to see how good we are for the biggest race of the year. welcomes you to Daytona Beach and our continuing coverage of Speed Weeks leading up to this Sunday's running of the Daytona 500. Today, it's two qualifying races as we lock in the 43 starters for the 44th running of the Daytona 500. Hi, everybody. Bill Weber along with our TNT special contributor, Tony Stewart, on the wagon right alongside Pit Road right next to Victory Lane. He starts 10th in the second qualifying race. Tony, a lot of guys out there with a lot of different agendas today. That is very true. Everybody here today, a lot of guys that have been high in the point standings from last year, they don't necessarily have to take the big chances that some of the guys in the back of the pack are going to have to take. Those guys don't have provisionals. They have to make those top 14 or 15 spots to make sure they're in the Daytona 500 next, or this Sunday. So the biggest thing is making sure that you're running up front, but don't take chances that it's going to tear up your car. If you tear up your car today, what are you going to have for Sunday? It can get wild out there on qualifying race Thursday. Now, here's the deal. The front row is locked in. Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick start up front on Sunday. The next 28 positions will be determined in these qualifying races. 14 drivers from each, each race will advance. So, when the checkered flag falls on race number two, we'll have a field of 30 starters. The next six drivers come in on their qualifying speed. Then there are seven provisionals, including one reserved for a past champion, that will guarantee us a 43-car field. Now, it's important to remember this. As these races unfold this afternoon, we'll continue to remind you of this formula. But the battle on the racetrack that is the most critical may not be for first. It's probably for 14th or 15th. Let's meet the front row for race number one, beginning with Dave Burns. Rookie Jimmy Johnson is just the third rookie in Daytona 500 hook, uh, history to qualify on the pole, but he's got veteran teammates, and they were just busting on you for something. Jeff Gordon was picking on you. Why? I was getting in the car a little early, probably 20 minutes early. I said it was time, so I was climbing in ready to go, and uh, we got 20 minutes still, so I'll hang out with you. All right, when you drive today, when you race, are you going to stay up front or are you going to hang back to learn? We're going to try to stay up front. Uh, we don't know what to really expect. You know, in practice, there was a lot of a lot of craziness going on, I guess you could call it, but we're going to try to keep this Lowe's Monte Carlo up front. But if things get crazy, you know, if situations start to present themselves where we, we can possibly injure this car, we're going to get on out of there. But I need experience, and that's goal today. All right, that teammate that was picking on him is also his car owner, and he's standing by with Matt Yoakum. And Dave, defending Winston Cup Series champion Jeff Gordon is also a two-time Daytona 500 winner. And he has one Daytona qualifying victory in his racing resume back in 1993, also the day he met his future wife, Brooke. A lot of good things happened to you that day. What about today? You are virtually, you have a virtual lock for the Daytona 500. How hard do you race today? Yeah, we do, but we want a good starting position for the Daytona 500. I'd love to be starting behind uh, Jimmy on the, in, on Sunday in the Daytona 500. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna run hard. We're gonna be smart, though. We're not gonna take too many risks and chances. Um, you know, we've won this thing before, but it has been a long time. And um, you know, we got such a strong car and a strong race team that we know that no matter where we start in Sunday's race at Daytona 500, we're gonna be a factor. Jeff is looking for a reversal of fortunes. And three of the last four Daytona qualifiers, he's finished sixth or worse, and then went on to finish 16th or worse in the 500. So he's looking for some change of luck. And, Marty, he's not the only guy here at Speed Weeks, is he? No, he's not, Matt. And you know all about this. We are all about drama at TNT, and there will be plenty of it today. Several drivers must race their way into the Daytona 500, like Bill just talked about a second ago, Kyle Petty. One of those guys who must race your way in. You've been over this race, I'm sure, a million times in your head in the last 24 hours. How confident are you you'll be in the Daytona 500 on Sunday? Uh, extremely confident. Uh, we felt like we put down a pretty good time the other day. We needed to be a little bit better, but uh, still, we've got a pretty decent comfort zone with that. Uh, even though I've had to race my way in since probably 95 or 96, it seem, seems like every year, uh, we've got the best time that we've ever had so far, and uh, this car is incredible. Uh, it's been good the whole time. Mike Eggie racing engines, they've been phenomenal all week long down here, and 
We just got to put ourselves in a good position, and that's all it's all about today. All right, used to the scenario. So if he does not make the race for some reason, it'll be the first time the Daytona 500 has run without a petty bill in the field since 1965. Okay, Marty, no pressure there. Tony, you're a lock. You're going to be in the starting field here on Sunday. But in your qualifying race, are you aware of the guys that have to get into that top 14 or 15 positions? Well, that's where my crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, comes into play. He's the guy to make sure that I know exactly who's around me, what situations everybody's in. You know the guys are going to take chances if they have to race their way into this, the field. You know that the guys that are locked in because of provisionals from last year or good qualifying times, those are the guys you're probably going to, we're probably going to want to be around today and, and make sure that we're not taking any unnecessary chances. But trust me, I want to be over here about 100 feet behind us here and be in victory lane today. So uh, we may have to take some chances at the end of it to try to get in victory lane. The sun popped out about two hours ago. Some clouds come and go. Rain is not in the forecast until very late today. But the wind, Tony, can that be a factor? It's really picked up in the last few minutes. It has. The last 10 minutes, the wind's picked up quite a bit here. So uh, it will. It'll play a big factor in this race today. The when we come and test, we normally see a lot of headwind on the back stretch and a lot of tailwind on the front straightaway. So as you go into turn one, you can get a little bit of a push condition, and when you go into turn three, you can be a little bit on the loose side. So it can play some games with some of the rookie drivers that haven't got a lot of laps here at Daytona. Okay, he's got a good seat for race number two, but for race number one, he'll be right here. Tony Stewart, one of 53 drivers vying for 43 spots at the Daytona 500. Will it be a day of delight or disappointment? We're all about to find out. Welcome back to Daytona. Throughout the afternoon, you'll hear drivers say it does not matter where you start in the Daytona 500. You can still get to the front. Maybe. But can you stay there? Only twice in the last 22 years has the winner started worse than eighth. Michael Waltrip last year and Derek Cope in 1990. Two topics that have been in the Speed Week spotlight. Safety and aerodynamics. First, the safety issues. Yesterday, in a Marion County, Indiana Superior Court, Racing safety pioneer Bill Simpson filed an $8.5 million defamation suit against NASCAR. Simpson contends that NASCAR damaged his reputation and his business during its investigation into the crash that took the life of Dale Earnhardt. NASCAR is the only defendant in the case. They have 23 days to respond to the suit. One point of fact, Simpson Performance Products is not part of the lawsuit. A NASCAR statement said the suit is without merit adding the sanctioning body will vigorously defend itself. The death of Dale Earnhardt here one year ago inspired a very ambitious search for safety, not only by NASCAR, but by race teams. For the latest update, let's go back to Dave. And Bill, the area inside the cockpit around the drivers is the biggest change. The driver's seats are much more cocoon-like, especially in the head area of the driver's head. And this year, they can be not only made of aluminum, but they can be made of a composite material, hard shell on the outside, and an aluminum honeycomb on the inside. That seat is now approved. Ricky Craven and Kyle Petty will be competing in those this weekend. I'm wearing two safety devices that were instituted last year, the Hutchins device and the Hans device that both go on the driver. The idea, hook to the helmet and keep the driver's head from moving forward in the event of an impact but perhaps the biggest innovation is for the future. This is an incident data recorder, also known as a black box. When a car crashes, NASCAR will record this data and use it for future safety. More data, and more data means safer race cars in the future. That's what's happening safety-wise. Now for the changes aerodynamically on these cars, let's go to Matt. Dave, following last fall's race at Talladega, a number of drivers and teams lobbied NASCAR for a rules change because they felt the current package then was just too dangerous. So NASCAR mandated a rules change for Speed Weeks 2002. The most noticeable change is the elimination of the roof air deflector. It created a big hole in the air. Many felt it was too big, creating three, four, and five wide racing and a closing rate that many felt was just too fast. Another change takes place back on the spoiler. Not only did NASCAR lower the rear blade to 55 degrees, they also took off the gurney lip or wicker bill. Also, NASCAR went to a smaller restrictor plate. Now, just when you thought that the whiteout had dried on Tuesday, NASCAR made another rules change. If you're in the Ford camp, you were a little bit happier. They took a quarter inch off the rear blade. Now, what most teams noticed that the practice times had increased, uh, had lowered by half a second. Now, many teams feel like that will not create more passing, and they feel like today will be a big gauge as far as any more rule changes concerning Sunday's Daytona 500. Many drivers feel like after today's race, we're going to see a bigger one of these, a bigger plate. Bill?